Hi, I'm the Casual Spaceman and welcome to my channel and welcome to day four of my Apollo 11 week. Day four was actually for the Apollo 11 missions 50 years ago was actually a significant day and a significant event because that was the day when the Apollo 11 spacecraft reached lunar orbit. In other words, they reached the point where they could then orbit the moon and then prepare for the lunar excursion module, which is the part of the Apollo spacecraft that detached from the command module and landed on the surface of the moon 24 hours or so later on the 20th of July. So I think it would be remiss of me if I didn't actually show you, as I did on the launch day, the um, audio um, between Mission Control and the Apollo spacecraft at the time. So anyway, that's enough from me. Let's play the video and I hope you enjoy. Apollo 11, this is Houston, over. Roger, go ahead, Houston, Apollo 11. Uh, 11, this is Houston, uh, you are go for LOI, over. Roger, go for LOI. Apollo 11, this is Houston, all your systems are looking good going around the corner, we'll see you on the other side, over. Roger. Okay, up here. Roger out. And we've had loss of signal as Apollo 11 goes behind the moon. Madrid AOS. Madrid AOS. Reading you loud and clear, Houston LS. Roger, reading you the same now. Uh, could you repeat your burn status report? We copied the uh, residuals and burn time, and that was about it. Send the whole thing again, please. It was like, it was like perfect. Delta pig zero, burn time 557. Uh, CAD values on the angle, VGX minus 0.1, VGY minus 0.1, VGZ plus 0.1, no trim. Minus 6.8 on Delta PC. Fuel was uh, 38.8, Mach 39.0, plus 50 unbalanced. We ran an increase on the pug. Now 44 showed us in a 60.9 by 169.9. Roger, we copy your burn status report. So we're getting a beautiful picture in down here now, 11. Uh, the color is coming in quite clearly, and uh, we can see the horizon and the, the relative blackness of space. And uh, uh, without getting into the question of grays and browns, it looks, uh, at least on our monitor, uh, sort of a brownish gray. It appears to me as though uh, it made a difference just sitting back in the uh, in the tunnel and gazing at all windows, it makes a difference which one you're looking out of. Uh, for example, uh, the camera right now is looking out the uh, uh, number five window, and uh, it definitely gives a rosier uh, or tanner uh, tinge, especially uh, when you look uh, straight through it and not uh, not at an angle. Uh, Roger. Yeah, the crater that's in the center of the screen now is uh, Webb. Uh, we'd be looking straight down on it at about six minutes before power descent. It uh, has a relatively flat bottom uh, to the crater, and you can see maybe uh, two or three uh, craters that are in the bottom of it. On the uh, western wall, the wall that's now nearest to, to the uh, camera, aren't near the bottom of the screen, we can see uh, a temple crater just on the outside. And then coming back toward the bottom of the screen and to the left, you can see uh, a series of uh, depressions. Uh, it's this type of uh, connected craters that uh, give us most uh, interest to uh, discover why they're in uh, the particular patterns that they're in. I'll zoom the camera in uh, and try and give you a little closer look at this. Roger, we're uh, observing the Dimple Crater now. Uh, the central peak that we can see on the orbiter photos doesn't seem to stand out very well here. Well, they're not central 
Peak, there are depressions in the center. Right. Eagle Houston, uh, we looked uh, good through the 210 on this mode. We're going to shift uh, data select to an 85 foot dish to see what we got, and then we'll be back through to you on the 210. If you'll stand by a couple of minutes in this mode, we'll be back with you. Over. Roger, Eagle, standing by. This is Apollo Control Houston, uh, 83 hours, uh, 21 minutes are now into the flight. Uh, meanwhile, uh, aboard the Eagle, uh, apparently uh, Buzz Aldrin and uh, Neil Armstrong, although Buzz is doing uh, most of the comm check at this time. Eagle, Houston, how do you read? Over. Houston, Eagle, read you loud and clear. Over. Uh, Roger, we're reading you five by. We got the voice good through the 85. Uh, the telemetry is in and out through the 85. Stand by. We'll be back through you with, with you to the, through the 210. Over. Eagle, Houston, you can go step five now. We'd like low bit rate. Over. Houston, Eagle, you have low bit rate. Uh, Roger, copy, Eagle. Yeah. Eagle, Houston, could you give me a short count? Uh, this mode, over. Houston, this is Eagle with a short count. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Eagle, over. Roger, Eagle, you're five by. This uh, S band voice is really beautiful, over. And Eagle, Houston, uh, we'll be standing in this, standing by in this mode for a minute or so. We'll be back with you if you'll just stand by, over. Eagle, this is Houston, coming through the 210. How do you read? Over. Roger, Eagle, how do you read? Eagle, this is Houston. Uh, we're happy with all our data in all modes. Uh, you can power down the comm now. Over. Roger, I understand. Uh, Eagle will power down the comm. And uh, we're just approaching uh, 27 volts now. It looks like uh, we won't have to bother with the... Uh, Right, tap. Right. Firing down, out. Roger, copy, out. Huh. Houston, we got a CEI 11 pad for you. And an update on the water dump, over. Stand by one, you. Are you through with 50? That firm, over. Okay. This is Apollo Control, Houston, 83 hours at 27 minutes uh, now into the flight, Apollo 11. That last exchange between uh, Charlie Duke, uh, our capsule communicator, and uh, Buzz Aldrin aboard the Eagle, identifying that uh, we're very well satisfied with the communications check on the lunar module, and uh, we'll proceed with uh, powering down the spacecraft. At 83 hours, 27 minutes, uh, we now read an altitude of 54.3 nautical miles, a velocity of uh, 5,376 feet per second. And this is Apollo Control, Houston. Houston, Columbia, ready to copy TEI-11, over. All right, Columbia, here we come with the TEI-11, SPS, BNN. Three seven two zero zero minus zero six zero plus zero four seven now thirty three zero nine or eight zero five two four two two plus four one four four eight plus zero three seven one niner minus zero two four two two roll is in a pitch zero two zero rest of the pad is in a set stars are in a the ullage is two quads Correction, two jet for 16 seconds. Use Bravo and Delta.
in a comment uh, the undocked present CSM Christian this is a for PI-11 is undocked present onboard weight of the CSM is 37200 pounds about 50 alpha in your DAP over all right, I read back DEI 11, FPS GNN 11 and we'd like you to do a wastewater dump at 84 hours down to 25 percent over I understand wastewater dump to 25 percent at 84 hours Roger and Mike will have LOS in about 11 minutes at 83.44 AOS is 84.30 and prior to or at LOS we would like you to go uh, configure the S-band for high grain uh, track to react, high gain beam to narrow. Uh, and let's try that uh, to see if we can get an automatic react at the next AOS. Over. All right, good idea. That uh, was Mike P Collins aboard uh, Columbia taking down a uh, maneuver pad. Right. Apollo 11, Houston. Also, that water that you got on the aft bulkhead. We, uh, if it's not too much, we just recommend sopping it up and then throwing the sponges away in the waste wa in the waste uh, storage area. If it's too much, then we use recommend using the procedure uh, in the checklist on page F10-14. Over. Uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. 83 hours, uh, 34 minutes uh, now into the flight. Uh, Apollo 11. The uh, lunar module uh, communications uh, has uh, has been uh, deactivated. Uh, we currently show a velocity of uh, 5,377 feet per second. Our orbital parameters uh, now read uh, 65.1 nautical miles apolune, 54.2 nautical miles paralune. At 84 hours uh, 35 minutes, uh, continuing to follow, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Apollo 11, Houston, would you have uh, Buzz uh, make sure he gives us the opposite? Pressure readings for you. Close up. Over. Well, now. Houston 11. The OPS is read 5750. Both bottles. Roger. Uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, 83 hours uh, 38 minutes. Uh, Apollo 11 now on CSM power. This is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, 83 hours uh, 40 minutes. Uh, now into the flight Apollo 11. We're uh, less than uh, four minutes away now from uh, time of uh, loss of signal with uh, the Apollo 11 spacecraft. Present time, our velocity reading uh, 5,375 feet per second. Uh, our uh, total uh, weight in orbit at this time uh, reading 70,502 pounds. Our orbital parameters, uh, Apolloon uh, 65.1 nautical miles, Paralune uh, 54.2 nautical miles. This is Apollo Control Houston. This is Apollo Control Houston at 83 hours uh, 43 minutes uh, now into the flight Apollo 11, uh, less than a minute away uh, from uh, predicted time of loss of signal with uh, the Apollo 11 spacecraft. We expect uh, the next time we acquire Apollo 11, uh, its crew, uh, Neil Armstrong, Mike Collins, uh, Buzz Aldrin, uh, uh, will have begun their rest period. And at uh, 83 hours uh, 43 minutes, uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. Evan has uh, passed out of range uh, uh, with the ground, uh, traversing now over the uh, far side of the moon. Uh, during this pass, uh, we had an extremely successful communications checkout uh, uh, with uh, the lunar module using its code name for the first time, its code name of the Eagle. 
uh, Buzz Aldrin uh, performed the counting tasks in concert with Charlie Duke, uh, the capsule communicator here on the ground. And at times, uh, Buzz's vo and Buzz's voice, uh, we noted uh, considerable enthusiasm for the way things are going. And at times, uh, Charlie Duke uh, shared that enthusiasm. And it's uh, made in checkout and communications. The lunar module eagle looked good. At uh, 83 hours 45 minutes, this is Apollo Control Houston. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 84 hours and uh, 28 minutes, uh, now into the flight to Apollo 11. Uh, we're uh, less than uh, two minutes away now from our scheduled time of acquisition uh, with Apollo 11. Uh, meanwhile, in Mission Control Center, uh, astronaut Owen Garriott uh, has uh, now replaced uh, Charlie Duke as our capsule communicator. Uh, we expect uh, that uh, some final advisories uh, will be passed uh, to the Apo uh, Apollo 11 crew and uh, final reports uh, such as crew status uh, will be received from uh, Neil Armstrong, uh, Mike Collins and Buzz Aldrin uh, prior to the start of uh, their sleep period. A little over, uh, we're a little over a minute away now from uh, scheduled time of acquisition. Uh, we'll continue to keep the line up and continue to monitor. This is Apollo Control Houston. Mark uh, 30 seconds now from time of scheduled acquisition. We uh, should be acquiring shortly and we're standing by. Uh, we have, uh, have data. We've acquired uh, data on Apollo 11. Uh, this is Apollo Control Houston, Owen Garriott, uh, getting ready to place a call. Houston, over. Houston, Apollo 11. Uh, 11 Houston, uh, Roger, uh, reading you uh, fine, and it looks like the automatic react went uh, very well just as soon as you came around the limb. Uh, we have uh, several small items uh, to uh, discuss with you here just before you go to sleep, over. Go ahead, Owen. Okay, 11. Uh, first of all, uh, on our uh, uh, limb systems uh, checks, uh, everything went uh, fine. Uh, would, uh, like to remind you though, tomorrow uh, you may see an ascent pressure light uh, when you uh, activate the MC and W. Uh, there should be no problem there, however. Uh, you did uh, note that the apt ox tank pressure was only reading uh, 111 uh, PSI, which is uh, normal at this point, uh, but uh, below the level which will uh, trigger your light uh, due to the helium which has uh, been dissolved into the propellant. Over. Roger, I understand that. Thank you. Uh, Roger, and uh, next item, the uh, supercritical helium uh, uh, rise rate uh, is uh, nominal, and uh, you also uh, had uh, questions for us about your uh, uh, thruster activity during the P-22 on the uh, last rev. Uh, I believe we understand that now. As uh, you reported, uh, your pitch was in Excel command and your yaw and roll were in rate command. Uh, as you were firing your uh, pitch thrusters, uh, this will couple rates into your uh, yaw and roll axes, and uh, the uh, uh, you were at that time holding only half a degree dead band, and uh, coupling uh, uh, rates into yaw and roll uh, produced the extra firings about the uh, yaw and roll axes. Over. Yeah, that may be true. It's very peculiar coupling in that it waits uh, longer than you would think, and its reaction is uh, greater than you would think. Uh, we were getting uh, yaw rates of around uh, four tenths of a degree per second, for example. Uh, Roger, Mike. Uh, we did play the data back, and uh, that's the uh, way it looked upon analysis of the uh, chart recordings back here. Over. Okay, fine. Uh, they've also looked at the uh, uh, results of your uh, landmark tracking. Uh, the uh, marks all apparently were very good, and uh, we've got... Uh, Oh, a full page of data here relative to the uh, altitudes of uh, the various uh, site locations, which I won't uh, read up to you, but I uh, did want to let you know that the uh, marks apparently uh, went very well. Uh, I also have your uh, uh, consumable budgets, uh, particularly your RCS uh, uh, propellant uh, quantities. Uh, they're delta from nominal if you should want them. Uh, your uh, worst quad is quad, quad Charlie, which is 9% low. Uh, I'll uh, not read up the others unless uh, you want them over. Okay, I'll have the O2 fuel cell purge. You want that now? Uh, I'll have to stand by just a moment. Okay, and then the other one is uh, we're still charging battery A. 
uh, 11 uh, Houston. Uh, we would like to uh, delay the uh, fuel cell purge until the uh, backside of the moon. And uh, you uh, go ahead and uh, should terminate your battery charge at this time. Over. Okay, I understand. I knew we had another uh, O2 and H2 uh, purge coming up in the morning. I wasn't sure whether you wanted to go through with this one or not. I'll wait until the backside and do it. Uh, that's fine, though. Terminate battery charging now. Uh, that's right, and uh, one other systems item here. Uh, uh, in order to uh, balance your uh, cryo tanks, uh, would you get your uh, O2 uh, tank one and your H2 tank two heaters off? Over. Okay, I have uh, O2 tank heater one off and H2 tank heater two off. Uh, that's right, Mike, and uh, we uh, believe you have uh, your quad uh, Bravo and quad Charlie uh, turned off in your DAP at this time in a five-degree dead band. Uh, we'd prefer a ten-degree uh, dead band uh, for your uh, sleep period overnight here. Over. Okay. Uh, one other uh, uh, item uh, relative to a malfunction procedure. Uh, it's unlikely that uh, you'll have to uh, worry about this uh, tomorrow, but... Uh, uh, in your uh, malfunction uh, list under docking on uh, page F11-9, uh, there is a uh, malfunction procedure for a high O2 flow rate uh, at the top of, uh, under tunnel, at the top of page 11-9. Uh, we would like to have you uh, not to use uh, that malfunction pr procedure should you encounter the high O2 flow rate and instead uh, check back uh, with uh, Houston uh, for a, a revised procedure uh, should you find that uh, situation. Over. Understand and uh, notice it made my checklist. Uh, 11 Houston, uh, Roger, that just about takes care of all the items uh, we have here on the ground uh, before time to uh, hit the sack. And uh, I guess you will have a uh, pre-sleep uh, check for us uh, before you uh, go to bed. Right, we're in the midst of uh, cycling the uh, O2 and H2 fans down. Roger. And the radiation uh, is as follows. Uh, CDR 11012, CFB 10013, LMB 09015. Negative medication, over. Uh, Roger, copy, 11. This is Apollo Control, Houston, 84 hours. Uh, 39 minutes now into the flight. Uh, that conversational exchange uh, with Owen Garrett uh, here in Mission Control Center and uh, principally Buzz Aldrin. However, uh, uh, Mike Collins uh, did talk uh, briefly about uh, Program uh, 22, the landmark uh, tracking uh, activity in which he performed. At uh, 84 hours, uh, 40 minutes, uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Okay, Houston, Apollo 11. Uh, 11, uh, Houston, go ahead. All right, so we're thinking about uh, taking the monocular with us uh, on into the LEM. Uh, we think it might uh, prove to be of uh, some use, huh? Uh, Roger, uh, Buzz, it sounds like a good idea for some of your uh, surveying work there uh, inside the cockpit, over. Okay, you want to run that by whoever uh, might be concerned? I uh, sure will. This is Apollo Control, Houston, 84 hours, uh, 44 minutes, and now into the flight Apollo 11. Our uh, current uh, spacecraft altitude, uh, now 64.3 nautical miles, uh, with an apolloon of... 65.2 nautical miles, Paraloon 54.4 uh, nautical miles. Uh, we show uh, an orbital period of uh, 1 hour 58 minutes uh, 40 seconds on our displays. Current uh, weight of the spacecraft in orbit uh, 70,502 pounds. At uh, 84 hours uh, 44 minutes, uh, continuing to monitor, uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. This is Apollo Control Houston, 84 hours, uh, 48 minutes, uh, now to the flight. We're receiving uh, noisy data at this time. Uh, we uh, have requested uh, Apollo 11 to uh, give us a manual relock. Uh, standing by at uh, 
84 hours, uh, 49 minutes. Uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Houston, Apollo, 11, how do you now? Uh, 11, Houston, loud and clear this time. I'm 8. Loud and clear. Uh, you faded out uh, on your last transmission. Over. Uh, Roger, are you in uh, wide beam now? Negative, I got you uh, locked back on again. Uh, React and now. Uh, Roger, that's what we want. We want to stay in narrow, and uh, we're a little puzzled about uh, why we lost you here a few minutes ago. Uh, do you have any ideas? Oh, sure, do. <coughs> sure, do. We're, show we're showing them at uh, 15 degrees plus 15 pitch, uh, 15 pitch, and about 270. That ought to be uh, clear. Uh, we concur there. Uh, we uh, still don't have any good ideas on why we were lost. Uh, Eleven, uh, Houston, uh, would you uh, confirm that uh, we did uh, acquire automatically when you came around the uh, limb uh, for this uh, passage? Over. That's confirmed. Thank you. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Uh, Eighty-four hours, uh, fifty-six minutes uh, now into the flight. Uh, Apollo Eleven. Our uh, current Apolloon, uh, 65.1 nautical miles. Current Paralloon, uh, 54.3 nautical miles. Uh, after uh, receiving some noisy signal, uh, Apollo 11 uh, has uh, locked back on in uh, fine form. That was Buzz Aldrin uh, speaking uh, with Owen Garrett uh, here in the Mission Control Center. I expect uh, we will take a second look at uh, uh, why uh, we had to lock on uh, manually. As we receive any updates on this, uh, we'll pass them along. Uh, we now read uh, 84 hours, uh, 57 minutes. And uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. <coughs> Apollo 11, Houston, over. Houston, Apollo 11. Uh, 11, Houston, on your uh, auto RCS select switches, uh, we uh, show uh, Quad Bravo disabled, but uh, Quad Charlie only uh, partially disabled. Uh, Charlie 3, I believe, is the only one you have uh, selected off. Is that uh, correct? All right, that's correct. Uh, this is Apollo Control Houston, 85 hours, uh, 5 minutes. And now on the flight Apollo 11. Uh, we confirm from the ground uh, following that conversational exchange. As was pointed out... Uh, we uh, see them all disabled at this time. Thank you. As uh, was pointed out, uh, Quad uh, RCS Quad Charlie is now disabled. Uh, following that conversational exchange uh, between Owen Garriott and uh, Buzz Aldrin, Buzz, uh, the lunar module pilot, uh, apparently uh, quite obviously still awake. 85 hours, uh, 7 minutes, uh, now to the flight Apollo 11, uh, continuing to monitor, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Apollo 11, Houston, over. Go ahead, Houston. Uh, 11, Houston, uh, we're going to uh, try to check out this ability uh, to uh, automatically reacquire on the S-band, and uh, what we want to do is to secure our uplink carrier for about uh, 30 seconds, then we will turn it back on and uh, see if the uh, spacecraft equipment will automatically reacquire. So if uh, you do not get a call from us within about three minutes, uh, that means uh, we have not been able to reacquire and uh, request your assistance on a manual acquisition. Over. Okay, we understand. Uh, 11 Houston, uh, we also appreciate uh, if you will uh, note the angles that the uh, antenna uh, tracks through in its attempt to reacquire. Over. Roger, we'll do that. Uh, 11 Houston, it looks like we're locked back up again uh, with uh, no delay. Uh, how does it look on board? Over. Roger, the uh, signal strength uh, dropped uh, very rapidly to zero, and the uh, pitch and yard in about uh, three seconds, uh, move toward uh, 40 degrees pitch and 240 degrees yaw. Right now, uh, they're setting on about 15 degrees pitch and uh, oh, about 265 degrees. 
shot. So they didn't uh, move very far. Uh, oh, about uh, 30 degrees of feet. And uh, then they uh, picked right back on up again, over. Uh, Roger, uh, some of the luckiest people in the background there. Uh, we uh, copied your uh, pitch and yaw angles. Uh, 11 Houston, uh, could you uh, give us the uh, location of your uh, pitch and yaw location of your position indicators? Over. Roger, they're at the same position as uh, the antenna right now. Plus 15 degrees pitch and. Uh, uh, now, now, wait a minute. I got him, got it at about 75 instead of 265. Okay, thank you. Uh, 11, uh, Houston, uh, we'd like to try the same procedure uh, once more. Uh, we'll leave the carrier off a little longer and uh, be back up for a call within four minutes. Over. Okay. This is Apollo Control, Houston, uh, 85 hours, uh, 17 minutes. Uh, now to the flight Apollo 11. Uh, what you heard uh, in uh, the conversation between Owen Garrett and uh, Buzz Aldrin uh, was uh, following a a uh, communications uh, check in which we uh, secured uh, the uplink carrier for some uh, 30 seconds and uh, waited a given a period of time, uh, approximately three minutes, to see uh, if the uh, spacecraft uh, would reacquire. Uh, we appeared to reacquire in fine form on this uh, first test. Uh, we will repeat it uh, this test a second time uh, delaying uh, approximately four minutes before we place a call to Apollo 11. At 85 hours uh, 17 minutes uh, we currently read an altitude, spacecraft altitude of 56.1 nautical miles present velocity uh, shows uh, 5,367 feet per second. An apolloon uh, 65 uh, nautical miles, paraloon uh, 54.4 nautical miles. Present weight in orbit uh, remains a static uh, 70,502 pounds. Present time in orbit, as uh, shown on our displays, uh, one hour, uh, 58 minutes, uh, 40 seconds. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Uh, 11, uh, Houston, uh, we're locked back up again. Uh, can you uh, give us a report on uh, how the antenna behaved? Roger, it was essentially identical with uh, before. The pitch was to uh, 45, 40 to 45, and the yaw uh, was uh, to that uh, about 255, 245 to 255, and then it uh, rather quickly uh, marked up that 15 degrees pitch and uh, 270 job. Uh, 11, uh, Houston, uh, Roger, your uh, angles, uh, 45 and 255. Uh, do I understand that as soon as the carrier dropped, it went to these angles, or did it only go to these angles after uh, the uh, uplink carrier was uh, uh, re-enabled and uh, the antenna began to uh, uh, hunt to uh, reacquire. Over. Now, as soon as the carrier dropped off, why well, it uh, drifted over to those angles and stayed there. And then when it came back up again, why well, it uh, all hunted around for a while but didn't get any further off. It gradually uh, brought it on into uh, the angles where it is right now, and then the signal strength would take uh, several. Uh, Jumps and uh, evidently it goes from wide to medium to narrow. Over. Uh, 11 Houston, uh, understand. And uh, on another subject, uh, request you uh, zero your optics for the night. Over. Apollo 11 Houston. Over. Houston, Apollo 11, go ahead. Uh, Roger, the uh, Black Bugle just arrived uh, with some morning news uh, briefs, if you're ready. Go ahead. Uh, Roger. Okay. Uh, church services around the world today are mentioning Apollo 11 in their prayers. President Nixon's worship service at the White House is also dedicated to the mission. 
And our uh, fellow astronaut, Frank Borman, is still in there pitching, and we'll read the uh, passage from Genesis, which was read on Apollo 8 last Christmas. The uh, cabinet and members of Congress, with emphasis on the Senate and House Space Committees, have been invited along with a number of other guests. Buzz, your son Andy, got a tour of MSC yesterday. Your Uncle Bob Moon accompanied him on the visit, visit which included the uh, LRL. Among the, uh, Roger. Among the uh, large headlines concerning Apollo this morning is one asking that you watch for a lovely girl with a big rabbit. An ancient legend says a beautiful Chinese girl called Chang'o has been living there for 4,000 years. It seems uh, she was banished to the moon because she stole the tale of immortality from her husband. You might also look for her companion, a large Chinese rabbit, who is easy to spot since he is always standing on his hind feet in the shade of a cinnamon tree. The name of the rabbit is not reported. Okay, we'll keep a close eye for the bunny girl. <laughs> Roger. Uh, you residents of the spacecraft Columbia may be interested in knowing that today is Independence Day in the country of Colombia. Gloria Diaz of the Philippines was crowned Miss Universe last night. She defeated 60 other girls for the global beauty title. Miss Diaz is 18 with black hair and eyes and measures 34 and one half, 23, 34 and one half. First runner-up was Miss Australia, followed by Miss Israel, Israel and Miss Japan. While you're on your way back Tuesday night, the American and National League All-Stars will be playing ball in Washington. Mel Stottlemyer of the Yankees is expected to be the American League's first pitcher. No one is predicting who will be first pitcher for the National League yet. They have nine on the roster. Even though research has certainly paid off in the space program, research doesn't always pay off, it seems. The Woodstream Corporation, parent company of the Animal Trap Company of America, which has made more than a billion wooden spring mouse traps, reports that it built a better mouse trap, but the world didn't beat a door to its path. Didn't beat a path to its door. As a matter of fact, the company had to go back to the old-fashioned kind. They said, we should have spent more time researching housewives and less time researching mice. And the black bugle is uh, all completed for the morning. Thank you very much. We appreciate the news. Uh, black team will be looking for an interesting day with you all tomorrow. Uh, Roger, we'll be going off here shortly, and uh, we'll pick you up in the morning for sure. Well, I hope you enjoyed that clip of a significant event in the Apollo 11 uh, mission. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up below. And if you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon and then you'll uh, be notified when I upload more videos. Um, just want to let you know also about tomorrow is the 20th of July and that is the day when they landed on the surface of the moon and then a few hours later Neil Armstrong took the first steps on the moon. So tomorrow to, to mark that historical event I'll of course be doing another video um, obviously there'll be several videos of Neil Armstrong taking the steps, of the, uh, steps on the moon and I hope to find some audio of the run up to the landing of the moon as well. And then later on in the evening, or uh, tomorrow as well on the 20th of July, I'm going to be doing a, a moon landing debate with my good friend Dead Kennedy in space versus two skeptics um, around the moon landings. 
and that'll be on Fight the Flat Earth's channel, and I hope to have the link to description, uh, in, link to that channel in the description below. So that's all from me. Thank you for watching.